We're very happy to have uh, Sergey Bukov uh, from Fatsac uh, to tell us more about uh, new development in the Fatsac uh, region. Yeah, so thank you very much. So first I want to thank Hang and Nina for uh, inviting me and for um, their kind hospitality, so which I greatly appreciate, of course. It's always good to be back in Berkeley. Um, so I'll tell you um, a story about uh, Waffe Witten theory today. So this is um, a story about PDEs. So any gauge theory is about partial differential equations. And um, today we'll talk about uh, PDEs mostly on four manifolds and three manifolds. So given some PDEs, you construct moduli space of solutions of this PD. So that's what we'll be talking about. And the problem, which is maybe somewhat technical, but that's basically key to all of this uh, area is that this moduli spaces are non-compact. So in most examples, I'll show you a couple of versions of gauge theories where, where essentially the only one I know where they are compact, things are nice, but then there'll be many where they're non-compact and that's, that's what we'll deal with. And we'll deal with this in, or the, this will be not necessarily a bug. So sometimes we'll see that it's a feature and we'll deal with this in two different ways or I'll describe the two aspects of the story. So one is based on recent work with um, our tongue and yo. So this is the paper that appeared a couple of months ago on, on the subject. Um, and the other one will be uh, with, uh, in joint work with Arshan um, uh, Singh and UK. That's going to be another version or aspect of the story of uncompactness of moduli spaces. In fact, it's a series of papers. Currently, version one is already available on the web and version two, sorry, not version in second part will, will hopefully appear So, So the main question in uh, or motivation for um, uh, the, this, this work is to understand cutting and gluing um, in, in this four-dimensional theory, namely buffer witten theory, uh, along three manifolds. So the picture you may want to keep in mind is where you start with some four manifold, which I'll denote uh, as M4. Uh, three manifold will be similar notation for compact those three manifold. And suppose you want to chop this uh, four manifold along some M3. So this, this cross section will be M3. This will be M4, I don't know, plus and minus to two halves. And you want to ask, how in the context of um, this waffe witten theory or some other gauge theory, you compute invariance of closed four manifolds by cutting and gluing. Uh, this is typical question that you would ask in topological quantum field theory. Therefore, uh, this question is really asking how close is waffe witten theory to TQFT? So uh, spoiler, it's gonna be very far and for reasons that we'll see very, very quickly. <laughs> but still, it's it's basically motivation to, to understand such cutting and gluing formulae. That's that's uh, what what we do. Um, so typically, in the context of uh, gauge theory, what you do then is um, to approach this sort of question. You create a long neck. So analysis will come in in many places, and I'll try to sweep many things under the rug. But I'll mention certain important consequences, and this is one of them. So what you often want to do to make theory uh, well behaved from an analytical standpoint is to create a NAC which looks like R cross M3 in this intermediate region by stretching the metric. 
And uh, if your theory is expected to produce some topological invariant, then this is certainly a loud declaration. And um, therefore, you think about the gluing in the context of uh, gluing along the long tube or long cylinder. And uh, what this um, theory associates to, to a three manifold is, uh, for example, from physics point of view, it's a uh, space of states. It's a kind of Hilbert space that it associates to a three manifold. And um, in class of theories that we'll be discussing called cohomological field theories, there is always some supercharged Q. So they're called cohomological because this is cohomology of that supercharge. So this uh, thing is defined. So this will be our first definition. This is defined as uh, kernel of Q mod image of Q or Q is, is a supercharge. So this is fairly general. It exists pretty much in every cohomological theory. So a question will be to actually compute this object, at least in the first part of the talk, which is roughly below line with the first paper. The goal is going to be compute this in various uh, examples of cohomological field theories. In particular, in Waffle-Witten theory, because until so far, there has been really no such calculation. So question is, let's try out the waters. Of course, we won't do it for all three manifolds, but let's do it for important ones. So any questions so far, feel free to interrupt me at any point. So this cutting and gluing operations along three manifolds or four manifolds have been studied in the context of uh, so-called T of M4 theory. And this is something that um, I want to also mention as a motivation because uh, it would be good to compare how close or far what we'll find in buffer with gauge theory to behavior of this object. So previously they were expected to be closely related. So another motivation is to basically test how close is this relation. So we'll run into lots of interesting delicate phenomena. And um, that's, that's another part of motivation. So speaking of uh, cutting and gluing, so <clears throat> um, we want to compute this, uh, space of states, if you wish, or uh, in this context, it's uh, basically Fleur homology of, of some sort um, in context of waffle witten theory, but which three manifolds shall we choose? So in, since we're dealing with four manifolds, another motivation for this is uh, four manifold topology, which is very rich, very interesting, and there are lots of unsolved, unanswered questions in four manifold topology, including, of course, uh, smooth punk rack conjecture, but lots of other uh, versions of it. And as it comes to producing exotic smooth structures on four manifolds, uh, there are lots of candidates, which we don't know if they are exotic or not, and we need invariants to test them. And the way this exotic candidates are produced is precisely via such cutting and gluing operations. And if you uh, look at what are the cutting and gluing operations, they actually use pretty simple four or three manifolds. So for example, a choice of M3, which is S2 cross S1. So I'm just continuing with the motivation. <clears throat> this um, in a four manifold topology uh, produces a glock twist operation that cuts and glues along S2 cross S1 is the glock twist. And um, choice of M3, which is a three dimensional torus, which is also a very simple manifold. Um, that's relevant to other interesting operations such as logarithmic transform. That's something that you can do on elliptic surface and I'll give you examples in a little bit. <clears throat> uh, there is a close cousin of this called Lutinger surgery. And also node surgery. All of them use exactly the same three manifold, namely three torus. And there are several other versions of it, generalizations of these operations. So <clears throat> to understand how to uh, cut and glue and how invariants, such as, for example, Waffle-Witten and other invariants behave under 
um, such surgery operations, it's important to understand um, this cutting and gluing or cuco homology for fairly simple manifolds such as S2 cross S1 and three torus and so on. And by the way, notice that all of these examples so far that they put on the board fit in a family of sigma G cross S1. <clears throat> so in our work with Shishman uh, Yao, our goal was basically to compute uh, Fleur homology in Waffe Witten theory, this object defined in this way, for this class of manifolds. In the end, we did a little bit more, but this will be enough to probe how Waffe Witten theory is sensitive or not sensitive to some of the interesting questions in low dimensional topology. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah, so, uh, so this is our type homology. Uh, Fleur, Andreas Fleur worked with, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll get back to, to, to it and say a little bit more. I, I won't be able to give you full um, kind of um, explanation, but um, yeah, so so uh, yeah, so fluid homology requires probably uh, like full course on its own right. So I apologize. I'll, I'll kind of dive maybe too far too quickly in um, more technical part. But um, from um, analytic point of view, that there is um, an operator which spurs to zero. So this Q is, is a differential acting on, and I. The, what exactly it acts on depends on the choice of theory. For example, in a, in a minute, I'll try to illustrate it in case of uh, various other PDs, such as in Donaldson theory, cyber witten theory, and then we'll naturally come to, to waffe witten theory. <clears throat> in particular, in the context of uh, Donaldson theory, which is based on, on a rather simple set of PDs, um, one can formulate this cohomology in terms of counting uh, gradient trajectories under certain flow um, which is uh, young mills turns Hyman's type flow. And this is what Andreas Fleur basically did. So it's infinite dimensional version of, of Morse theory. It's pretty much like that in every case, except that uh, unpacking this definition and writing it in terms of uh, flows becomes different case by case. It is transverse dependent. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, typically, in uh, the, this this business, if one wants to stay away from uh, phenomena or delicate, interesting phenomena such as wall crossing, which I'm not going to touch at all today uh, for lack of time. Otherwise, I definitely want to get back to to, to the second part. In uh, when talking about four manifolds, one assumes that uh, d two plus uh, is greater than one. And in the world of three manifolds, analogous condition is that D1 is greater than one. So obviously, uh, this is just on the borderline. But um, again, today it's it's not going to affect us. That's a very good question, but it it, it won't affect anything I'm going to say. Okay, it's not going to affect in the sense that we won't be able to use I'll choose my questions for today in such a way that um, they, they won't require understanding wall crossing behavior and broken flows. But would it not be in principle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, in fact, um, right. So I'll, I'll actually talk about this two crosses one, for instance, which uh, uh, right on the borderline of this condition. In fact, uh, in this family, I also want to include um, S3, which is obviously close enough. It's, it's just a degree one bundle over S2, and it has a B1 equals zero. But the questions that I'll ask today won't be affected by, or at least if you trust me, they, they won't be affected by small crossing. Okay. So. So what are the possibilities? So there I wrote PDEs and then what kind of PDEs uh, can or should be considered. 
So first and probably simplest uh, example is the case of Donaldson theory that I mentioned a moment ago. So in this case, PDE is a solved duality equation for gauge connection A. A is a connection on the principal G bundle over say four manifold. So the idea of Donaldson theory is to study moduli spaces of solutions to this PDEs. That's again, the same moduli space and um, work with it. So for me, this G bundle is going to be SU2 bundle. So most of the time um, in non-abelian case, I'll work with um, SU2 group. In fact, when I'm gonna tell you results about Hoffa Witton theory, um, many things can be generalized, but computations are simpler in case of SU2. <clears throat> right, so this example, I start with it first because it's probably uh, fairly well known. There is a good chance you've heard about it, but it's not the simplest from the point of view of moduli space. Uh, why? Because uh, even if you, so here, the moduli spaces are labeled by topological data, namely second churn class or instant one number. And even if that number is equal to one, the moduli space of one instant on on a general four manifold is a fairly complicated thing. Why? Because it has a boundary. So this is a cartoon for second churn class uh, equal one of a general four manifold. Yeah, let's say gauge group as you two. So it has a boundary which looks kind of like this. And it has to do with the fact that instant on on a general four manifold can become of a very small size. I think about it as a point. And if that's the case, then it can sit anywhere on the four manifold. So there is a boundary of this moduli space, which looks very much like M4. It can also, uh, so then natural question, okay, we start growing the size of the instant on. So what happens with the moduli space? That's kind of the radial direction going inward. And we can also run into singularities. So the actual picture, which often is presented, looks kind of like this, which is a combination of lack of compactness and lack of smoothness of the moduli space. It has pretty bad singularities due to various reducible solutions and other things, and it has a boundary or it can be non-compact. So from point of view of this moduli space, the Donaldson theory is not necessarily the simplest, but it's, it's historically the first, and I, I put it in my list of theories, the first. It's based on this PD, which has just the gauge connection. And in some sense, this is the best or simplest thing we could have had because it has no other uh, objects called usually fields that are coupled to do the gauge connection. Everything else we're gonna do will involve more and more of this additional uh, functions or fields or forms which couple to, to the gauge field. And that's actually gonna make things more and more complicated. So next an uh, item in this list, which actually should have been the first because it's by far the simplest. Um, it's a cyber Witten system. So advantage of this is that gauge group is U1 and it computes uh, at least conjecturally the same set of invariants as Donaldson theory. To a various extents, this conjecture has been proven, but not fully. And it's based on a set of PDs, which looks like this. Again, notice that in each of the stories that I'm gonna tell you about, first starting point, a set of PDs, then moduli space, and then we start talking how things are behaving under Cartoon and Blue. So it starts life in a similar way. Um, so dual part of the two form, which is the curvature of the connection. And then you introduce uh, a spinner psi, um, section of the spin bundle on a four manifold. If you have two such, you can quickly convince yourself that in their product, there is a component which looks like self dual two form. So you can actually compare these two objects. And then once you have a section of spin bundle, you probably immediately think of Dirac equation, which is something that you would write uh, on this guy, psi. So you have one equation for A, one equation for Psi, but your system involves pairs of A and Psi, which satisfy these two equations respectively. So moduli space is very nice. It's um, beautiful and easy to work with. And, and this is gonna be the, the first and nice example, which is prototype for many things that uh, we want to consider. 
And already here, I can start asking, actually, this is pretty much the only case that's been understood very well so far. I can start asking, what does cutting and gluing mean in this theory? So the analogous object, I can call it, for example, H cyber Clifton because it's a space assigned homology, pure homology assigned to a three manifold based on cyber Clifton equations. Uh, it's called um, monopole Fleur homology. So the proper name is uh, HM star. It has a homological grading of our three manifold. <clears throat> That's analog of Fleur's form formulation. Fleur did it uh, for, 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 for this version. It's uh, the same by now as, as shown as Higgard Fleur homology of a three manifold. And here in Berkeley, you have Mike Hutchins who developed embedded contact homology. So uh, this is based on symplectic geometry and contact structures and ECH of three manifold um, is the same as, as any of this. In fact, each of these versions formulated differently, these two use uh, symplectic geometry. This one uses gauge theory. That's how it came about for us. Uh, they come in four different versions. For example, HF has, can have decoration here, which could be plus, minus, infinity, or it could carry a hat altogether. And um, yeah, so that's, I'm not gonna go there, but I just mentioned uh, that there are such things because they're important. In particular, they're important in cutting and gluing. So if you want to ask to what extent is construction of cyber quitting invariants based on this PDs on a four manifold can be recovered by cutting and gluing in the TQFT like fashion, uh, you can quickly see that it's not a usual TQFT, not in a T sense, not in any extended sense, because <clears throat> you have to know actually all four flavors of this theory to recover the invariant of the, of the closed manifold. So that's, that's already indication that in this setup, which is relatively nice compared to other things that we're gonna discuss, that's already not quite the TQFT. Um, yeah, so for me, it will be a little bit of a digression, but um, the best I can do is uh, to recommend the, the paper we, we had with uh, Pavel Kutrov and Kumar Nafa, where we basically, um, um, in a couple of sections, uh, two sections are devoted to, to, to explaining, for example, physics of this different plus minus and in, in infinity uh, symbols. Um, mathematically, they have to do with the following. So <clears throat> again, I'm not gonna go too far in the explanation, but maybe I'll, I'll show you the answer. So the most interesting and richest object is, is the plus that, that contains uh, HF plus, that contains more information. So let me show you what, what this is for a couple of simple manifolds and then I'll try to comment on how other variants, they're called variants, are related to. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. And it's known to mathematicians as results uh, of their very hard work from the past couple of years, rather tedious work because it involves homological algebra. It's not some simple combination. So it basically requires non-trivial knowledge of all four variants in general. Some, huh? Uh, no, no, I wish, I wish. That's, that's pretty hard. It's, it's a hard, yeah, it's a very serious analysis. No, uh, that's, uh, in fact, even up to present day, I, I feel that mathematically and, and in mathematical physics, there is a lot more to be said about it. But it's a good in indication that it's not a um, simple gluing formula. So in some, simple, in some instances, for some choices of M3, it boils down to something simple and, and um, I'll, I'll also show you example kind of of a simpler nature. But in general, uh, for general three manifold, that's you're required to have all of this. That's, that's true. They're clo closely related. I, I wouldn't say it exactly uh, like that, but uh, they are closely related. Exactly, yes, yeah. That's, that's correct, yeah. You can think of them as basically un, uh, having the same underlying chain complex, but the different differentials, not that you can actually recover one from the other. That's correct. 
So uh, let's see, I started writing this for, for example, HF plus, which is the most interesting thing in this world. Um, we're still talking about cyber equipment invariants and equations. Um, and just to illustrate what uh, will happen and introduce some notations, let, let's uh, pick some of these examples. Let's be very concrete. After all, it's computable. So this uh, will also allow me to introduce some notations. Um, this will be called T plus. It's uh, already showing that even for a simple manifold, uh, homology is infinite dimensional. So T plus, uh, what is this? Uh, you can think of it in many different ways. It's um, first of all, um, polynomial algebra on uh, one variable. So I'll write it in standard notations, U, U inverse module times C of U. That's, that's how it's usually presented. So here U is as uh, one generator, but this is basically uh, polynomial algebra on one variable, also known as cohomology um, circle uh, invariant, invariant cohomology of a point, or that of course is the same as the classifying space of U1, which is uh, CP infinity. Uh, so it's also cohomology infinity, <clears throat> complex projective space of infinite dimension. Either way, um, it's not such a bad thing. Physicists uh, know this as a Hilbert space of harmonic oscillator, but um, it's, it's infinite dimension. And that's, that's the, the best we can get in this whole story. Um, for comparison, um, analogous uh, thing for S2 process one, which is um, which, which is the other example I mentioned over there is going to be two copies of this thing. So it will be T plus T plus. So it will be two copies of, if you wish, of harmonic testing. And and th th this will be somewhat important in, in what I'm going to say. So these are concrete uh, answers for for uh, fairly simple theory. Before you take the homology, um, um, no, not really, no, because some, some things uh, get easier, but some things get uh, more complicated. So if you don't take differential, you're um, not working necessarily with invariant yet. So that information, which is sorry, then I'm not sure I understand the question. Right. Well, but that's not an invariant. Then we, we can show that it's in, invariant under topological changes of metric or anything. I mean, we can do it. But. I'm not sure. If that's I mean, your, your, uh, your formulation of this overlap. You can't formulate the level of shape for chain homology with the same shape of homology variant. Well, that's, um, I mean, in, in the end, one it has to take, um, so, so in, in some sense, maybe that's how it's always approached. So, yes, you, you have to formulate chain complex, ask how chain complex behaves under such gluing and stretching along neck, along some three manifold. But to get something invariant, eventually one has always to take the homology. And uh, some things in analyzing how chain complex behaves are indeed a little easier, but uh, we have to consider these two operations together, constructing the chain complex and taking the differential.
Right, so this was uh, one example of um, one manifold along which, which you can cut and glue, namely um, three sphere or S2 process one in the context of uh, cyber quitten theory. Um, this is also maybe a good place to mention that um, cyber quitten theory also depend, is not quite produces for you invariance of four manifolds, it produces invariance of four manifolds equipped with spin C structure. So even before we started doing any of these calculations, you uh, couldn't say it's a normal TQFT in the sense of a T. The best it could have been is a statement that it's a, a spin C decorated TQFT. So that means that there is additional structure we have to supply in every step of the process. Uh, this is not a showstopper. So this is actually not going to be worrisome to us. Uh, yes, it proves that structure will be much richer. It is true that it's strictly speaking outside of what Atia thought about back in the day, but this is okay. So that's not going to be uh, a problem. Now, with this said, um, I want to um, maybe state one simple, uh, well, actually back at the time, it's not quite simple but it's an untrivial result. It's simple instance of, of a gluing in the context of cyber quitting theory. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, actually maybe before I do that, um, let, me, let me motivate it uh, a little bit. So, um, one can consider classes of various uh, four manifolds and four uh, which are um, elliptic vibrations, elliptic surfaces. I'll call them EN, where N is a uh, non-negative integer. So E1 is um, the Enrique surface, E2 is a K3 surface, and so on. So these are um, elliptic vibrations which have um, the following uh, basic invariance. So chi is uh, 12 times n. So for example, for K3, you get a uh, familiar 24. Uh, signature is uh, minus 8 times n and uh, so on. So as n increases, uh, the topology gets more interesting. For example, in the cyber quitten terminology, uh, for general n, it has n minus one basic classes, <clears throat> which is uh, precisely this dependence on spin three uh, structures that, that I mentioned a moment ago. So this uh, en you can represent by cutting and gluing, kind of like what we did before. As I said, it's elliptic surface. So what you can do, you can take a tubular neighborhood of a regular fiber or uh, in fact, generic, uh, any fiber, uh, generic or non-generic. And that's gonna be uh, something which looks like a solid torus. So it's a boundary is a three torus. So you can represent this uh, EN as a sequence of gluing. Uh, for example, say that it's the same as EN minus two minus um, the neighborhood of, of a fiber union over a three torus. So that's, that's our three manifold M3 of um, analogous thing uh, done with a K3 surface, E2 minus NF. <clears throat> and here I'm considering this specific family, which can go only over even numbers of N, which is especially nice and convenient because uh, by Rochlin's theorem, if N is odd, we deal with uh, non-spin manifold. So it's convenient to take this, this even. And in this context, uh, a result from um, uh, 20 years ago, if not more, by um, um, Morgan, Morovka, for example, this is 97, and then again, in slightly different, or I could say maybe cleaner version, of this is due to tubs in 2001 is, is a nice gluing formula. So previously I told you that things don't behave well, that you have to have 
all these uh, four variants of this uh, pleural homology to reconstruct how gluing is done. So here things are much nicer, but again, this is very special. It's a special to gluing along um, three tori. That's what this gentleman studied. They studied how the theory behaves under cutting and gluing when three manifold is a three torus, and it behaves pretty well. I mean, if you apply this formula recursively at the level of manifold, what you find is that the corresponding um, invariants behave in the following way. So cyber equipment of EN is cyber equipment invariant of E4, the first non trivial one, divided by that of the K3 uh, to the power N minus two over two. Again, remember, I'm assuming that N is even. So for, for spin, spin versus non spin reasons, times cyber equipment. Um, of um, E2. Okay. So even though um, this um, pleural homology of, of a three torus is actually pretty large, uh, it's already, you can see that it's growing in size as uh, you make your three manifold topologically more and more interesting, for example, as Betty number increases and so on. Um, so for, for three torus, it's actually pretty big. Nevertheless, cutting and gluing behaves very much like in T2FT. So this formula is reflecting very well uh, the, this, this structure. So this is something that he could have predicted and he would very much like the result. Uh, but again, this is very special for uh, cutting and gluing along three torus. Now, <clears throat> so to state first uh, theorem, or if it's theorem that's uh, representing the results I'm presenting for you, is that this is this behavior, this nice cutting and gluing, is false uh, in Buffett-Witten theory. So, in other words, this um, nice multiplicative formula does does not work. Uh, yes, E of argument four. Yeah, yes. I'm just applying this this uh, iteratively. So if I have time, uh, I'll try to say a few words where this theorem is uh, coming from. Uh, once I get to to Waffe witten theory, but it's um, <coughs> why why it's uh, um, right. So. Um, it's relevant for, for several reasons. So first, uh, it involves computation of, of this uh, fluor type homology groups for manifolds exactly of the type sigma G crosses one. So in this case, G is one, it's, it's exactly that's relevant. And secondly, all these uh, elliptic surfaces are um, very nice. For them, buffer witten invariants were computed and you can simply check that this uh, does not hold. So actually this provides a bridge between what, what has been known and uh, foot on the door of some of this homological invariance so making it consistent was precisely what we tried to do. Yeah, I didn't get to it. I didn't do uh, It's partition function. So partition function. So here that's a invariant of a manifold, which depends on spin C structure in Waffe Witten case. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. How is this um yeah i apologize so, so it's um i'm probably not going to get into it because then i already realize i'm going too slower than i planned but but it's it's basically uh so so here to get from here to here you should think essentially of uh excision uh and, and gluing so what's um uh, yeah so try try to literally apply what a key would say if it behaves as a TQFT under under this operation and then you would quickly get to this final answer. Anyway. Um, no, 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 not quite because uh, you, you want to exactly yeah exactly yeah that's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Because it basically says that each of them each of the next things is obtained from the previous one by this operation, but we need a beginning of the progression that provides the beginning of the progression this provides the step. 
in the sequence. So, uh, well, uh, it's actually uh, pretty good because this, this is equal to one. I was. <laughs> 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 it, it's a pretty good place to start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, the, the, this T3 factor, uh, this T3 is where the gluing is done in, in this process. Yeah, the, the, this ratio is basically described in this iteration. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it is gluing along the three terms. Yeah, so I didn't define buffer return theory. So here I'm jumping a little bit ahead saying that th this is not going to hold, for example. So that's one concrete sense in which this theory is going to be buffer return theory is going to be richer, more complicated, and even further from TQFT, even decorated TQFT uh, compared to, to, to cyber quit and story. Is that, so just like, I um, that's right. So here it behaves uh, as if Hilbert space is one dimensional from that point of view. Yeah. So that's that's that's. Um, no, no, no. Uh, safe uh, thing to say is just this statement. But then it's interesting to see indeed uh, under the hood how exactly it fails and whether summing over states in this much bigger space would make sense. And so, so that, of course, will be closer to the truth. But this is just to illustrate that uh, yeah, simpler things fail. So as we go away from cyber quitting story, we should be really item number one on, on this list of different gauge theories that we get further and further away from TQFT. Um, yeah. So let's. Right. So I'm going to erase uh, Cyber Quitten and, and Donaldson theory. Uh, but now I'll move on to more interesting versions of the theory. So hopefully you remember what Cyber Quitten equations look like. Because uh, next thing I'm going to do is modify them a tiny little bit. And um, we'll write the following system. So it will look very similar. So plus, so there'll be U1 gauge connection. But then we'll write several copies of uh, this uh, sections of the spinner bundle. So we'll have a sum over, let's say, J from one up to what I'll call NF following obnoxious uh, physicist notations. Um, Psi, psi bar, the label J. So we basically consider um, um, same system, except that there are now an F different copies of, um, of this field, of the spinner. For each one of them, we'll impose the same condition. So G slash psi, um, the I of J is equal to zero, there is a direct equation. And this system is called <coughs> uh, multi-monopole equations. Or PPDs. So this is uh, the first instance where... <laughs> Which one? Yeah, but there are several monopoles. 
Oh, uh, that's that's right. Well, that's very relevant. So anyway, <laughs> I was going to comment on economy, but maybe it's recorded. So. Um, right. Um, so uh, this system is qualitatively different in terms of moduli spaces. So I told you that in each of these systems, the logic is that start with equations, construct moduli spaces. So first thing we have to ask is indeed, what's what's the uh, moduli space for, for different values of an F? How does it look like? What was nice about CyberQuita and many things that could have been done there is because moduli spaces are compact. So that's the only example where there was a compactness statement. So these moduli spaces uh, generically are non-compact. So they look kind of like this. And you can try to ask or uh, get an idea what uh, the asymptotic boundary is um, in the following way. So <clears throat> for instance, even with um, FA equals zero, so suppose you pick A connection, which is either trivial or uh, pure gauge. So then curvature is zero. So then you get on the right-hand side, some of the squares of different sides. Now, Psi as a spinner has four components. In fact, these components can be identified with the space of quaternions. And you can take even for an F equals two, Psi two to be J, where J is understood as endomorphism of the spinner bundle times Psi one. For any Psi one, which satisfies this equation. So this equation, uh, we can, estimate when there are solutions and there are not solutions based on the index. So uh, index of the Dirac operator that, that we have here is uh, one eighth of lambda square minus um, signature of the four manifold where lambda is uh, precisely the curvature class of basically C1 of my bundle, yeah, this takes values in H upper two of the four manifold, right? So I suggested let's take A equals zero, so lambda is zero. And depending on the signature, you would see that generically for generic metric on your manifold, there would or there would not be uh, harmonic spinners depending on the signature. That's what the signature theorem said. So therefore we just pick a manifold where there, I mean, of the signature of a suitable sign so that there are plenty of spinners. We pick for each one of them, the second guy to be related by this non-trivial endomorphism of the spinner bundle, and we just solve the equation. So what this describes is the asymptotic behavior of a generic situation. So it shows that <clears throat> as I, so because here I can rescale Psi by any number I want, uh, in particular by a large number, and the more I do it, the less important this term in the equations becomes. So therefore it shows that as soon as I have an F in this system, either two or greater, my moduli spaces are going to be non-compact. And this is in particular one source of non-compact. So that's pretty bad. Yeah. Why is this not called non-compact? <clears throat> in N equals one, uh, something, several special things happen. So um, I would be glad to dive into details, but it, it would take a little bit of a detour. And that's actually, in some sense, that's the exception. That's the exceptional case in all of this. So I'll give you four examples. I already gave three. Uh, Donaldson theory, Cyberquitten theory, multimonopole version of Cyberquitten, and next one is, as you can guess, is Waffewitten. <clears throat> and and uh, then I'll comment on various other cousins, but um, in, um, I'm presenting them sort of in increasing level of details and in all of them, except for cyber equipment system modular spaces are non-compact. Cyber equipment is the only exception where it is compact on the nodes. So that makes it extremely, extremely special. So. But um, yeah, so coming back to this. <clears throat> um, so something, um, yeah, so, so basically nobody looked at this until fairly recently for, for this reason. So um, we already see what's happening. So the more bells and whistles we're gonna be throwing into these equations, uh, more fields or more gadgets, 
the more non-compact they will be, the moduli spaces, because uh, there will always be a region in the space of fields with size, in, for example, where they can take large values. That's the main lesson. That's, that's the basically source of non-compactness. That's why I go through this example rather than just skipping it. So in other words, if you have some right-hand sides, other fields that can be rescaled, that's, that's the problem or that, that sort of potential source of the problem you have to worry about. And it gets, unfortunately, realized in every single instance. So here is something nice happens. Uh, so a couple of years ago, um, motivated, in fact, by equivariant course, I uh, learned from Andre years ago when I was a kid and roughly this, this high, was that, well, when you have a symmetry, you got to use it, right? You have to do things equivariantly. So that's what I learned from work of Andre, Nikita, and their collaborators. And here we have a symmetry. So all this psi's and f of m appear on the same footing. And there is a bilinear combination, which remains invariant, beautifully invariant, under uh, s, u, and f action. So the system is invariant under action of the group s, u, and f. So as we made system more complicated, we actually gain something, we gain the symmetry. So therefore, when one defines various integrals over such moduli spaces, one can consider not just an integral, but equivariant integral. So integration now understood in equivariant sense over this moduli space and F with a suitable measure, which should have been the multi-monopole version of cyber invariant is meaningful. In fact, cool thing, it's meaningful on any general four manifold. So this symmetry is present regardless of which four manifold we talk about. And um, the answer turns out to be, so that's a theorem from a couple of years ago, that such integral has the form cyber Quinton invariant of a spin C structure associated with lambda times something that you can recognize given all the formulae on a board. It's sum over i running from one up to an f. One over earlier class of um, um, equivariant normal bundle associated to fixed points. So we had to go through enumerating fixed points. This is precisely sum over fixed points with respect to s, u, and f action. And here you have earlier class, which looks like product of j not equal to i zi minus zj um, to the power one eighth of lambda square minus sigma. And you probably can guess where lambda square minus sigma came from. That is perfection. So a good thing is that here, zi's are equivariant parameters associated with this uh, SUNF action. But now those of you who love vertex operator algebras can <coughs> Uh, quickly notice that as function of the eyes interpreted as positions on a two-dimensional plane, Z1, Z2, Cj, this is nothing but a correlation function in some vertex operator algebra, which actually depends on the choice of the four manifold. So that's a uh, Another cool thing I can quickly mention that yes, this story is pretty bad in a sense, moduli spaces are non-compact, but it's actually good because this non-compactness is non-compactness in a very symmetric way. And as long as fixed points are isolated or compact, you're good. And actually something nice comes out. <clears throat> Um, no, not that I, yes, but actually in a very indirect way. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, yeah, this one it's clearly has to do with Rochlin uh, theorem, which in turn, uh, computation of Rochlin invariant, if you think about that as eta invariant, is actually the same as what gives you conformal dimension inside in Ising model. So. But, but that's not the right UA. <laughs> so. but, but yeah, that's, that's a good point.
Well, uh, we're almost there. So let's uh, finally, I'm raising the theorem about waffle witten invariance, but let me finally define or, or tell you what, what, we're, what, what this talk is supposed to be about. I already said that this nice formula I'm raising is not gonna hold, but what's gonna hold and why? And uh, what is the computation of Fleur homology groups there? Um, right. So, buffer with on PDs. So these are, out of the four examples I gave you, these are most uh, advanced and um, non-trivial equations. So previously, the cyber witten system was uh, equations for pairs of a and psi or a and many psi's. So here there will be at least three objects. Uh, I'll call them A, B, C following Waffer and Witten. Uh, so it always starts life in the same way. A is a G connection connection on the principal G bundle. And then there will be various terms modifying it. And then again, that's what this bells and whistles generally are. So what are they specifically? So um, the um, players in this game are, are the following, so maybe I'll leave them first. So A is a connection. So that's a connection on some principal uh, bundle P over four manifold. So B is going to be a self-dual two form on the same four manifold taking values in the joint bundle. Everything will be a joint value. So um, probably very soon I'll stop writing at P all the time. And C is uh, zero four. So A, B, and C. So then um, we have the following coupled equations for all these ingredients. So we have half of commutator times b. I'm not gonna perhaps unpack these notations. Um, usual commutator of c and b equals zero. So the, the last term is easier to understand. So everything is uh, a joint valued. So if you think about SUN, think about, I don't know, n by n matrices. So commutator means commutator with respect to Lie algebra. C is a zero form, b is already of the type that has the right shape to be added to f a plus, so that's good. More interesting thing is that out of uh, Lie algebra bracket, as well as um, uh, fact that B is in uh, form of the type uh, two plus, we can concoct yet another form of the same type. So that's, that's where the second term comes in. And the last uh, or the next uh, set of PDEs relates um, derivatives, exterior derivatives and their adjoints acting on B and C. So uh, D star, uh, acting on B is equal to D normal exterior derivative, well, or rather twisted by gauge connection A acting on C. So this is the system of PDEs. And um, as usual, solving basically uh, asking for a space of triples A, B, C, uh, satisfying these equations modular gauge equivalence is what modulates spaces. So we want to study this. Okay. So that's, that's the definition. Now, um, unfortunately, we're not in a nice shape as, as here. So moduli spaces, so here we see already, given the lesson from this multi-monopole system, that there are two fields, B and C, which are valued in the Lie algebra, and therefore a priori can be rescaled by any number. So they're not bound by anything. And the uh, question is, are there solutions such that B and C can run to infinity? And the answer is yes. So very much like in that case. So it's maybe a little less obvious by, or harder to see, but uh, that's, that's unfortunately true. And the second thing which unfortunately is true is that there is no symmetry on a general manifold. Uh, if M4 is completely generic, 
that's uh, we, don't, we don't see any symmetry mixing them. So playing this nice game with equivariant integration is not going to work. So that's the reason why. Uh, Well, curvature is a little funny object, so you have to be a little bit more careful with curvature because it doesn't necessarily immediately imply that moduli spaces are non-compact and run to infinity because we have to divide by gauge equivalence. So we know that gauge field is, uh, <coughs> I mean, it's, it's slightly different. So it, it has, we can add to it um, D of anything and so on and so forth. So as a result, um, with gauge field, we have to be a little bit more careful. But, uh, and, and that's actually, in retrospect, the reason why Donaldson theory works very well, or reasonably well, and that's uh, why cyber theory works really well. But other theories, and in fact, I should probably add to this last item since I'm done summarizing what kind of things can be produced, I have to mention that <clears throat> there are, you can write any uh, four-dimensional so-called n equals two in the physics language QFT that you like, and do Donaldson written twist. It will produce for you a system of PDEs analogous to it. So there are lots of systems coming from n equals two, n equals three, and Waffe Witten is n equals four example of a theory. And all of them have all these bells and whistles like B and C. And the point is that all of them allow this Bs and Cs and other things to run off to infinity. So that's the non-compactness. That's why in the very beginning I said that feature of this entire discussion is going to be non-compactness of moduli spaces because it's ubiquitous, it's unavoidable, it creates problems, but there is no way around it. So we have to address it. All right, so any, any other questions uh, in the meantime, before we now proceed to applications? And, oh boy. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yes, sorry, this is kind of probably my question about operations, but uh, if I remember correctly, like your, the old Papa Witt paper, I thought the ECA were all kind of zero, so they end up being just like a word. So like, where in the story is it eventually? Right, so uh, there are a couple of vanishing theorems that are available, and unfortunately, pretty much all of them uh, are written in Waffe Witten paper, except that some of them have been reconsidered more carefully by, say, Tanaka and Thomas and, and other people. And uh, they work well on some families on four, four manifolds. For example, if you have a Keller surface, that's why in the beginning I mentioned that these elliptic surfaces, which I chose to be spin, are nice. That's precisely so I can compare it to something that's being at least understood from different perspectives. So this is rather special. Um, or if um, your uh, manifold that means positive curvature. So then there is another version of vanishing theorem, uh, which unfortunately rules out um, interesting applications to uh, maybe SPC4 or potential candidates like this. So, um, but in general, if four manifold and four is anything you want, then that's, that's more or less it. So then, all of these are coupled, uh, so all of this talk to each other, and there is no way to to uh, remove that. Yeah, that's that's the that's the issue. Yeah. So there were two more questions. Actually, yeah. So can we learn anything about the geometry of the spaces by studying the filters and the forces? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so um, that's that's basically indeed. So um, let me denote by H. Waffe Witten this uh, fluor type uh, homology of, of a three manifold. So um, if three manifold is of the form sigma G process one, as I mentioned, 
or something that boils down to surface one way or the other. So then indeed you can reduce this problem to um, something that has that's closer to surfaces. For example, here we basically show that uh, this is uh, the same as the work of homology of uh, some E-value Higgs bundles. on Riemann surface sigma. Um, and I can unpack what this E value means, but uh, it basically reduces problem to, to something like vortex modular space, because that's what Higgs bundles are. This is gauge theory in two dimensions. Unfortunately, uh, so this E valued Higgs bundles will have not one Higgs field as an original Hitchens work, but several copies which come from this B, C and so on. So actually they have quite a few. That's why this adjective E value is, 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 is coming from. So again, one can see very explicitly that moduli space is non-compact. It admits lots of uh, holomorphic forms and functions. And as a result, it's cohomology is infinite dimensional and so on. That's how one can get the mileage. So one can get a good idea about what the moduli spaces are by trying to base um, our underlying geometry on, on Riemann surface. Okay. Okay. Hard. Analysis is hard, but uh, I mentioned that uh, we have this two papers and basically the, the, this, this work I'm holding, the, the, which is the first paper, is all about uh, reducing this uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 to this thing, trying to analyze it and compute it and, and so on. So, yeah. So where do you spot the limitations like, like come from? I, I'm not maybe very well defined, but I don't know if I'd be able to distinguish these equations with some other random genome. Yeah, so uh, mathematically you want to write something which is a uh, nice elliptic system, so you have to have uh, some kind of um, balance uh, built in. Uh, there is a physics -y technique to derive them called topological twist, so uh, which says that starting with any physics -y Q of T of uh, some of these types, which probably requires explanation and so on, one can produce such PDEs. And there are there are many of them. That's that's the point here. But they're all kind of similar to this. Is this like a generalization of all of this, right? Set C equals zero. It's kind of like. Um, like yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That's that's precisely the point I'm trying to advocate here. In fact, answering Peter's question, um, in practice, that's actually quite useful because if your three manifold is say Riemann surface process one, it is some version of Hitchin equation just with a bunch of Higgs fields. So in this case, for example, uh, E, maybe uh, I'll unpack it just a little bit. It's a sum of uh, three line bundles, L1, L2, L3, which are sort of powers of the canonical line bundle on sigma, some, some half integer powers in general, uh, times uh, everything is a joint value. So I promised I stopped writing it. So maybe that's... Uh, so there are lots of Higgs fields, basically, and they all are responsible for non-compactness. So those of you familiar with Hitchin systems, Higgs bundles know that that's where infinity in, in Hitchin moduli space comes from, from sending Higgs field to infinity or taking large values of the Higgs field. So that's, that's the non-compactness. <clears throat> so um, wh why this makes things easier because, so on this manifold, you, you could say, well, this is still non-compact and so on, but luckily um, in this setup, so original um, buffer Witten theory has actually U1 symmetry called, um, or um, <clears throat> um, homological grading in the language of uh, fluoro homology, which uh, upon specialization to this very special class of manifold is very much like, uh, why can, can we do it for color surfaces and other things? Because there is additional symmetry once we restrict a very special class. So in this case, what happens is that um, if we specify our underlying topology to be of this particular type, then there are indeed uh, symmetries acting. So there are three ones associated with uh, each of these line bundles. So I think we call them something like X, uh, Y, and T. And therefore one can start carrying out equivariant tools that we know in love. And that's actually what gives mileage on this calculation. So uh, for, for the special cases, 
just like for Higgs bundles or usual Higgs bundles, there is some kind of equivariant for Linda formula with respect to this equivariant action and so on and so forth. So one can get, get answers out of it. So as a result, applying this technique, so I'm gonna state yet another theorem maybe. So I think in my terminology, which I haven't been following very carefully. So theorem three will be a statement that for um, H of um, this H of a Witten of S2 process one, <clears throat> um, the answer is pretty big. And for when structure group is SU2, it consists of four copies of T plus. So it's T plus um, sum four times. Uh, remember that when I showed you example for cyber quitting theory or Higgard Fuhrer homology, it was only two copies. And uh, in uh, interesting corollary that I'm going to state in a second, I'll, I'll come back to, to, to this. Um, so, nevertheless, H uh, Waffe Witten for three sphere, and, and actually there are some other terms. So, I'm not writing the full answer, I'm writing just infinite part, which consists of this infinite powers. Uh, but uh, for three sphere, it's actually the same as what we saw in monopole cyber Witten equations for in Higgard Fuhrer homology, just a single copy of T plus. Uh, no, no, to, to, to study it, to, 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 to study it and to, to compute things quickly. So basically to, to borrow uh, equivariant techniques like the one I'm raising to uh, explore, uh, study this quickly in several different ways for, for this entire family of three manifolds based on of the form S1 cross sigma G. In general, for general M3, no, no. Uh, for, for general M3, one is expecting to have only homological grading. So in some sense, uh, this homological grading here is responsible for, uh, is associated here with this symmetry U1, which I call U1T, but in general, it will be just a homological grading of this. Uh, um, but it's, 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 not, it, it's not, I don't want to think about it in terms of action. So it becomes action on special class of manifolds. It's not a symmetry. It's, it's a grading, it's a homological grading. Uh, in, if you work with special class of manifolds, two things can happen. Additional symmetries may arise. And this one that was homological grading will become um, grading with respect to some symmetry. But a priori, this, uh, this grading could be just homological grading which may be understood as symmetry, but it would require me introducing, um, except in addition to the fields A, B, and C, uh, many other fields which are Grassmann odd variables. And this would be so-called off-shell formulation of, of the theory. So then, then it could be realized as part of the symmetry, which acts on both even and odd fields and comes from what we call R symmetry. Do you know the yeah, so that, that's the goal of the paper to compute this answer for general G and in fact for something like the three sphere, basically circle bundles over 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 sigma G. Yeah. And um, right, so any any other questions? So this result has interesting corollary that um, is a puzzle and I don't know how to resolve it, but it shows again that I already gave you kind of a punchline um, that, that um, um, waffe witten theory uh, is uh, even farther from TQFT structure than cyber witten theory. 
So that's that's basically what's the message. And I'm now providing lots of details in how exactly it happens. And again, to uh, people like me, it may be interesting how details are, are but again, if you want to walk away with one conceptual message is that non-compactness causes uh, behavior which is very, very far from, from TQFT. Um, but uh, regarding that, there, there is an interesting corollary of, of this uh, theorem of this computation here. So it doesn't even require me to, to write this dot, dot, dot terms to, to see the following interesting behavior, which for me is, is a puzzle in the following sense. So in the usual um, Fleur homology, there is a surgery exact sequence. surgery exact sequence, which is basically a statement how this uh, fluorotype type groups are related for different three manifolds, which uh, in turn are related by basic surgery operations. In the beginning, I motivated the studying of these groups themselves by doing surgeries that change four manifold by cutting and bluing along three manifolds. But we can ask the same question, how about changing three manifold by cutting and gluing along two manifolds, okay? So um, even starting with early days of Andreas Fleur, in fact, here in Berkeley, so I guess it's a pleasure to, to speak here. Um, we know that um, there are um, nice exact sequences relating the, this, this Fleur groups. So for example, Fleur homology in the context of young Mills theory, this was the first uh, item on my list, the, the Donaldson theory, for three sphere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Correct, yes, yes. Um, yeah, so, so it's, uh, right, so this calculation, right, it's, um, based on the following conjecture, which um, is widely believed uh, and, and um, probably some people can claim to, to have a good proof of it. Um, I would state it as a, as a conjecture, or at least assumption. It's a statement that no differential is trivial, but rather uh, theory has no um, non-trivial instantons, instanton contributions to, to, to calculation of this uh, object H. So uh, there, there are a couple of things that can happen. So first of all, um, in order to, right, so how is this defined? So let's go back uh, to, to original um, definition. So this is defined as cohomology of some Q uh, acting on um, huge complex of things, which may involve, uh, so for example, I would have to put all of these guys together. I would have to say that omega two plus, um, but I would also have to restrict it to manifolds of the form uh, from four dimensions. Computing this requires basically assuming that M4 is R cross M3. And now writing everything from the M3 point of view. So I would have to, I mean, omega two plus would become just omega one of M3. Then there will be many copies of this omega maybe one of M3. In fact, there will be many things with reversed parity. Parity means with respect to Grassmann even or on and so on. So then on top of it, there could be, and then differential still acts in a non-trivial way uh, here, taking us from one part to another part. In addition, there could be uh, instanton contributions, which are really non-trivial trajectories, uh, with non-trivial instanton number along R cross M3. So this assumption uh, that, that I guess you're asking about uh, is basically a statement that, and again, one, I can actually go a little bit more in, in detail why, that um, there are no uh, non-trivial instant on contributions, but of course there is still this action of Q on, on this whole huge complex. How do you define the action of Q? Is it defined by doing the blood again? No, it's uh, it basically, right. So it should be defined, uh, by um, um, constructing an analog of uh, Fleur um, theory. So it, it would involve flow equations, but with respect to this PDEs. So we, we, we would basically consider equations on R cross M3. So first we would uh, ask in our complex, 
uh, what are the um, um, generators of the complex? This would be our invariant solutions on, on, on the space. And uh, differential in principle would involve um, uh, configurations which are non-trivial flows. So, so they, they, they are dependent. Uh, right, so in offshell formulation, this boils down to, right, so either we can do that, that's perfectly fine, that's, that we can do that, or if we introduce this additional field, which is actually more convenient often for calculations, and that's how it comes in this twisted n equals four superang mills, uh, you would get uh, also um, action of differential on, on the, this forms. So you would have a lot of fermions as well, not just bosons. That's how you would get, uh, for example, torsion in, in this homology and things like that. Um, so what I'm saying is that, uh, again, I apologize if that's too telegraphic, that this action may still be non-trivial, but uh, this, this um, action associated to, to instant cons is trivial. I'm talking about the flow. Yeah, the yeah. Exactly. And here, this has to do with um, enhanced, with huge uh, degree of symmetry of the problem. So this n equals four that, that I raised. Um, so there are three twists um, of f n equals four theory. So there is uh, same type of twist uh, that Donaldson Witten can could consider that would lead to a joint monopole equation. So basically same monopoles with psi in a joint representation. But then there are two others. Uh, one was uh, first considered by Marcus, sometimes called Marcus twist, and that's what uh, Anton and Ed used in geometric Langlands. So uh, that's one twist of um, n equals four, which would localize to complex flat connections. So uh, that, that's a different twist. So B and C would be something else. In fact, that would be completing the gauge connection into a complex one but in a very natural way. And um, uh, here, what happens is that this Waffle-Witten twist and that other twist, the, this geometric Langlands type twist, they actually coincide. And um, part of this um, enhancement is, is the fact that if we, for example, try to formulate it using uh, what's usually called a T Fleur conjectures, uh, relate uh, instant on Fleur theory to Lagrangian Fleur theory, we would find that our Lagrangians are holomorphic uh, Lagrangians. They behave really well. And um, in physics language, there would be BAA brains, and therefore computing homes between them could be, it, it should be local. It could be expressed as X, 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 X groups in, in complex structure where there be brains. So this philosophy uh, for holomorphic Lagrangians has been used very widely. Again, some people would argue that that's a theorem, and I certainly subscribe to it, uh, but, but just to be slightly more cautious, I'm stating here as an assumption. So if there is one place where things may fail or go differently, that's, that's, uh, that, that's, that's uh, maybe that assumption, which is very unlikely. But yeah, that's, that's a good. Like, <clears throat> yeah, so that, right. So yeah, I should have probably said it earlier enough when I wrote this n equals four that out of these three twists on a three manifold, two of them become the same. So that's why actually, Part of another motivation for our work was to compare these groups with the scan module. So there is a general belief that, um, or I don't know if it's, a, I don't think it's proper to call it a belief because it's wrong, but uh, some sort of expectation that this uh, fluor homology groups are closely related to scan module. So our job was to try to understand how close. And uh, that's, that's uh, part of the motivation here as well. In fact, in a paper with uh, Peter that I think he'll tell you about um, next time, uh, ne next week, um, there is um, something interesting that, that, that we observed from slant slightly the difference point of view once I mentioned this. So if you take M3 to be a three torus, then uh, dimension of the scale module of, of uh, this three torus uh, is, um, is uh, nine. For, for SU2, I'm talking about group SU2. But uh, dimension of uh, this H waffle written appropriately interpreted is 10. So there is a mismatch, of course. 10 is nine plus one, but I was about to write a puzzle here and I'll, I'll get back to it, something that again, I don't understand and we should think about. So this is obviously a puzzle. So every time you hear about relation between gauge theoretic uh, object, namely the 
clear homology for this n equals four theory and skein module, uh, I never know what to do with the basic example of a three force. They just don't match. And again, you can ask Peter more about it next time. I'm about to present yet another puzzle, something that again, also of the same caliber. I mean, it's not a puzzle, it's a result, but it says that some, some structure doesn't quite work if, if one is very naive. So this, I guess, illustrates that one cannot dislock it. We have to be really careful distinguishing properly gauge theory computation and some, some other computation. But yeah, that, that, that was a very good question. Yeah, thank you. Because it's underlying how things are done. So, um, right, I realized that um, I'll never get to the second part. In fact, I'm still not even finished with the first part. So the best thing I can do is uh, finish it in the next 10 minutes because I have to, at four, I have to leave for, for, for my flight. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but, but luckily I will be able to finish my first part. So, and uh, uh, the, the, the second will. will... <laughs> um yeah, but any, any other questions? So since I'm not pressed by time, it will, at least I feel that it, uh, I can now <laughs> relax that I'm not catching with the second part at all. I'm happy to answer other questions. Yeah. So going back to the question, maybe this is differential. So I'm confused between the, the differential coming from a floor type construction like more stereotype of thing with instant pumps and the differential coming from the, the BRSD structure of the N equals four theory. So, yeah. so is that the, the, the thing that the Q only has to do with the BRSD by the plus Yes, and yes. That's that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 the statement I'm making. Yeah, exactly. Would there be any examples of theories in which in which that wouldn't happen, which the Q is somehow some complication? Oh, Donaldson theory. Uh, yeah, so formulated in a BRST way, that would be exactly the, 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 in fact, any, pretty much any theory. So this is quite rare. So this has to do with this structure, special structure of pentacles four and related to the fact that two twists unify on a three manifold and so on. For any other theory, like n equals two twisted theory, maybe even n equals three. I haven't thought about n equals three that much in this context. It, it, it would be exactly more general behavior where we would have both instantons and, and BRST actually. This is therefore quite uh, special and part of the reason why, despite complexity of the equations, there is something one can actually compute. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so yeah, um, right, surgery exact sequence. So in early days uh, of, of uh, once upon a time here in Berkeley, um, Andreas Fleur proposed the following relation between this uh, homology groups associated to three manifolds. So uh, if you have different surgeries on knots, so let not K, let K be a knot in a three sphere, then for zero surgery and um, plus one surgery, the corresponding homology groups are related in the following long exact sequence, HF of um, S3 plus one of K, and then this continues periodically as usual. So uh, this was um, understood much better by Donaldson and Brahm, um, unfortunately following after the tragic death of, of Andres. Um, and there is a generalization here, which says that in fact, the same thing works for uh, pure homology of um, any um, three manifold uh, y, so I'll call it y not M3 so that we don't confuse the two things. And uh, here is going to be something similar, basically, um, uh, y0 of k. So this symbol denotes surgery on some knot. And uh, hf of um, oops, y plus 1 of k, and so on. So naively one could ask, uh, and that's, that's the question mark. That's the one I wanna put here. Could the same be true in uh, waffle witten theory? So in fact, uh, in many versions of gauge theory until so far, which unfortunately involve versions of Donaldson Fleury theory or, or cybert witten monopole type theory, uh, are such that this uh, surgery exact triangles work. And, and the, the reason is not very, um, I mean, details are important, 
but um, a, a priori reason could be a fairly sort of straightforward expected in particular one of these maps, for example, corresponds to some natural cobordism uh, between three manifolds, which is a certain handle attachment. And then it's easy to see that you would expect such a map between, between the corresponding groups because the theory is basically, if it's not a TQFT, it still behaves kind of like TQFT. So therefore, to probe whether buffer reason theory is TQFT or not, that's the original question I was asking, let's uh, try to write the same sequence. Uh, so IH buffer written stands for version of Fleur homology for buffer written PDEs. And um, either in a three sphere or, or um, in more general surgeries and in other manifolds Y, you can try to write this sequence. So H buffer written, this would be zero surgery on some not K and um, H buffer written of um, plus one surgery on an OK, and then it periodically continues like usual long exact sequence. <clears throat> uh, so that's all good. So let's see if, if this has a chance. I showed you in the very beginning example for Higgers fluor theory and, and uh, gave the answer for cyber quitton monopole fluor homology for simple spaces such as um, this one when M3 is either three sphere or S2 process one. And both of the spaces appear here. Well, three sphere already appears, but we can also make S1 cross, S, sorry, S2 process one appear if we choose this not to be unknot. So if you choose the not to be unknot, then this will be exactly S2 process one. This will be again a three sphere. And the way the sequence works well, like a charm in, uh, cyber equivalent theory is that you have T plus, this was two copies of T plus, this was T plus. Everything is nice. But <clears throat> look at what happens here. Four copies and one copy. So I don't know how to make much sense of it or how, how it should work. So that's therefore remains a question mark. So uh, in this talk, I'm presenting to you not just something results and cal calculations, but also things that deviate from TQFT structure, but in a way that, uh, well, is somewhat unfortunate, but it would be nice to fix it. And I don't know how to do it. Yeah, but it continues, but that's not gonna help. So unfortunately, so actually that's another problem. So speaking, yeah, so, so Peter here says, well, why don't I continue and look at the whole uh, infinite range and so on? That's another problem. Uh, I just mentioned that one of these maps in the sequence is induced by cobordism. And um, that cobordism is basically attaching to, uh, it's basically a manifold which is interpolating between um, say S2 cross S1 and a three sphere here. But, um, and it's easy to see that this manifold, because of the topology of S2 cross S1 and 3 sphere being so different, has to carry B2. So as a result, uh, in um, Donaldson theory and, and in cyber quitton theory, um, the corresponding map between the spaces has non-trivial degree shift, the grading shift, because this is very similar to uh, what we discussed in the very beginning when we talked about moduli spaces and computed for you the index of the Dirac operator. And um, we saw that this is given, for example, by um, one eighth of lambda square minus sigma. So we see that if manifold, four manifold has non-trivial topology, then there is non-trivial index. And what this translates to in, in this language of um, BRST complex and all that is uh, basically homological degree shifts, which coincide with virtual dimension of modular space. I mean, virtual dimension by definition is exactly this index. So therefore, in this uh, exact triangle, there is one place, uh, namely this one, where degree, homological degree is shifted by one. And that's good, that's normal. That's how such sequences work in general. Waffer Witten theory is very special for that same reason that it's very symmetric and it coincides with other twists and so on. And, and exactness, that's the question that Min asked me that, that uh, there are no, uh, the instant on differential extremely related to this, there is another fact that in buffer written theory, all moduli spaces, regardless of topology, always have virtual dimension one or zero. As a result, naively, all these groups will sit on the same homological degree. So that's another reason why I can't even 
I mean, that's yet another question mark. So now I, I can put two of them because there is no degree shift. I mean, they all, they all try to sit in homological degree zero or start there. I mean, the bottom was of the power. So something funny is going on. And, and um, right, I don't know how to um, resolve uh, this question, but of course there is a calculation of, of all of these groups. That's why we did it. So maybe to give you one last theorem, I think uh, I ended up with theorem three. So let me exchange the boards and finish with one last statement. So this is gonna be theorem four. So one would expect, um, so I, I mentioned that um, um, yeah, so so a six d perspective, which is uh, something discussed in detail um, again in the same work I mentioned the title culture of. And Kuhn and Bosha, you would expect the following that um, mapping class group of your free manifold across SL2Z, SL2Z, think about it as uh, electric magnetic duality in a four dimensional n equals four theory, should act on the object that we're trying to compute. This H Bosha Witten associated to three manifold and the choice of gauge group, which I'm constantly suppressing. So therefore you could ask how does this, once you compute it, break into representations under this uh, action? Um, I'm not gonna talk about the cell to Z, that's an interesting question in its own right, it's discussed in the paper and so on, but I wanna focus on this mapping class group action. Why? Because um, if you have um, um, three manifold, which I mentioned in the beginning, namely S2 process one, what the guy that we discussed and it still is on a board. Yes, that's that's the one for which the answer is partly written. Then it's mapping class group consists of uh, two obvious Z2 factors, which are visible at the level of homology of S1 process two. Um, the homology here is interesting in degrees one and one and two. And uh, this each of the Z2s acts as minus one in degree one and degree two pieces. But there is, what's interesting is that there is a third guy that's not visible at the level of homology. And that is, has to do, so this fellow has to do with the fact that pi one of SO3 is Z2. <clears throat> and SO3 is a symmetry group of S2. And this gets activated if you try to uh, basically rotate S2 as you walk around S1. So that's a non-trivial self diffeomorphism of S2 process one. And it's very important one in topology because again, you don't see it at homological level. And this is what's used in the surgery operation when you do cutting and gluing of four manifolds along S2 process one, that's called the glut twist. So now the theorem that I wanted to state, now theorem four is that um, this glut twist E2 uh, acts trivially on H waffle written of S2 process one. And in order for waffle written theory to detect the Glack twist, you would actually want this to be non trivial. So here I'm sweeping under the rug one important fact. So there is a corollary. That, that, yeah, that you could phrase that um, the important corollary of this theorem is that partition function or four manifold invariant produced by studying PDEs uh, in buffer witten theory uh, cannot detect or does not detect.
that twist, but here I want to be very, very careful and say if uh, pi one of G, trivial, so our group is simply connected. So this has to do with another fact that I swept under the rug in this entire discussion that this uh, waffer witten theory, just like cyber Witten was decorated by spin C structures, waffer witten theory is also a decorated TQFT decorated by pi one of G, or rather H2 with coefficients and pi one of G. So therefore, when um, our group is not simply connected, what happens is that instead of just one space, you have several copies. And what one should analyze to generalize this theorem to these other instances is to see how the GLAC twist acts on different copies of, of this space, because it's gonna be decorated and graded. And again, I can go into details of the decorated structure, but what this shows is that on each piece, it acts in a trivial way. And that is not good enough to detect the GLAC twist if, if the group is simply connected like A, for example. Okay, so I apologize uh, for completely suppressing the second part, but it allows me to finish on time and even leaves five minutes for questions before I run to the airport. Um, no, no. Um, there is another relation to the hat, but um, which was part of motivation, but uh, yeah, it, we, we're very far from it, unfortunately. Um, so this buffer written it's, it's it's actually related to the second part of the talk which i didn't give so i don't know how much i should say about it because it's it's a rich story in its own right so there is a whole perspective on buffer written theory so maybe i'll use this space to make sure i don't like expand the answer um so 6d perspective which i briefly mentioned already there so i don't feel bad kind of writing it um, so you can start in six dimensions and consider uh, Hilbert space of six dimensional two comma zero theory on um, four manifold of the form T2 cross R cross M3. And um, if we believe, and that's a big if, that 6D theory on a two torus gives you an equals four theory, then that should be related to what we're studying. Um, so, um, Huh? <laughs> we don't believe it. We don't. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so my second part of the talk was that I believed uh, for a long time, but and I mean, question is again, in what exact sense? And unfortunately, uh, for some purposes, it's correct. Like sl two z action uh, can be understood as indeed sl two z acting on a two towards. Um, huh? No, no, this is very far from the hats. That's uh, so far, actually, yeah, I, I cannot easily connect it to the, the hats. So um, connection is very far in, in, in direct at this point. Um, it's connected in the sense that, for instance, if I focus uh, here, first reduce on M3, I'll get uh, basically Hilbert space of theory T of M3 uh, on a two torus, okay? So, and, and this is very far from that hat because that hat would have um, this with torus replaced by a disk with a suitable boundary conditions and there would be completely new ingredients. So, so in that sense, it's pretty far, but because instead of D, T2, we would have D2 with boundary conditions. Is there any sense to compute uh, the Hilbert space if you have R3 or M3 or not? S3 or R3 or not. Um, Yeah, that's another good question. Let, let me first answer your previous question, or for first question. So you're asking, what is the early characteristic of this? So, and again, I'm not answering the right question because unfortunately this is not quite equal to H waffle written. So that would be the second part of the talk. If it were, which is again, a big if, and that's not correct, unfortunately, um, 
taking or the characteristic would mean taking a trace over Hilbert space. So studying theory on a yet another circle. So we would have to replace, so to answer your question naively, I would have to say, what is the partition function of T of M3 on a three torus? Basically with an index of this thing. So it is some simple four many, uh, three manifold invariant. Um, it is actually uh, also no pun intended, closely related to this discussion about dimension of the scale module and so on, with some mismatches. So um, the reason I'm bringing it up is that I want to say that this is already interesting, actually. So, so the, but the answer is not entirely trivial. Um, right. And your second question is even more uh, interesting. So if you want to add knots, you would have to add co-dimension four surfaces in six dimensional perspective have one leg along the knot on a three manifold one leg probably along our direction um, something like that um, that would require a choice of a point on a two torus so it would actually break sl2z in an interesting way so these objects will transform not invariantly but covariantly under sl2z action so that would be even richer and more interesting story so to, to that i have really little to say <laughs> yeah, thank you.